This Let's Edit with MIDI Composer tutorial is brought to you by VideoGuys.com, the leading reseller of video editing and production equipment for more than 25 years. Check out VideoGuys.com for great deals on Avid MIDI Composer software licenses, subscriptions, and upgrades, and use coupon code MC101 for 5% off any purchase. Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here and I am back again with another Media Composer 101 tutorial and in this next lesson we're going to talk about probably the most important setting of all. And I'm talking about the keyboard setting. Obviously the keyboard setting is what you're going to use to get yourself up and editing as quickly and as easily as possible. Obviously keyboard shortcuts are just that. They're shortcuts that are going to help you map important functions to your keyboard so that you always have a quick go-to because I was always taught right from the beginning that you're always the fastest that you can possibly be when you're only editing with the keyboard and not clicking on commands on the actual composer window. Now, don't get me wrong, there are some commands that you might want to have on the composer window, but most of the important ones you're going to want to keep on the keyboard. Now, what's also important to keep in mind is that with the keyboard setting, there is actually another tool that comes along with that, the command palette, where we're actually going to find all these commands that we can add to the keyboard to get some functions in there that we might not think are doable. Okay, short introduction here. Let's just get into Media Composer and let's get started. Okay, so let's command and tab into Media Composer, obviously an Alt and Tab for my Windows friends out there. Let's navigate over to our settings and we're gonna navigate down to find the keyboard settings. Let's make sure we actually double click on the correct one here. There we go, there's the keyboard settings. Now, there's something that I do wanna point out right off the bat. If you happen to have purchased one of those fancy Media Composer keyboards that are color coded with all of the specific keyboard commands on them, my best piece of advice is do not alter those. The whole point is you have them on the keyboard if you're just getting up and running and that's what's going to get you up and running as quickly as possible. You know ever since back in the day when I started editing on Media Composer I left the keyboard settings the way that they were. The actual uh, from the number one two three four five down all the way to the bottom to the space bar those were all always left untouched. Now there was you know two reasons for that. One was obviously so that I could memorize those keys as quickly as possible. But to be honest, the other reason was, was because I was a freelancer, I was moving from edit suite to edit suite. And the last thing that you want to do if for some reason you forget your settings is have to spend an hour remapping the entire keyboard if you happen to do that type of thing so that it's a way that you're comfortable editing with. Because remember, in the edit suite, time is money. So really, all that I would do is get in and I would alter the function keys at the top of the keyboard and what I would also do if I hold down the shift key on the keyboard, you'll notice that as soon as I do that, I don't have access to the entire keyboard again so that I can go and put in additional shortcuts using the shift as a modifier key. Now, the other great thing is that to be honest, let's say you were to, you know, create all kinds of crazy settings in here on the on the shift and the keyboard. And let's just say hypothetically you were to go to an edit suite somewhere and you forgot your settings, you forgot to, you know, email them to yourself. Here's the thing you'll always be up and running with the standard keyboard and then as you go throughout the day you can quickly drop in the rest of your shortcuts you know so that you can keep the process going but also get that keyboard the way that you want as quickly as possible okay so now I originally said that you know we have the keyboard settings but there is a tool that we're going to need to actually make our settings to create the settings because you're going to notice that I can't actually just take anything and just drag it and drop it into the keyboard settings we need an actual tool or a palette that's going to have all of these commands at our disposal that we can then take and drag and drop. So to find the command palette, it's actually very simple. What I'm going to do is I'm going to navigate up to the top to the tools drop down, and I'm going to navigate right down here to the command palette. You'll see the shortcut, of course, is command and three on the keyboard. I'm just going to drag it right over here. Now you're going to notice that everything has been broken down into what is seemingly logical categories, move, play, edit, trim, etc., etc. Now, depending on the type of shortcut that you want to put in, let's just say hypothetically that I wanted to put in the remove effect command. Now, I already have it mapped on my keyboard right here to F5, but if I wanted to find that, you'll just have to think sort of in the back of your head, okay, it's a remove effect command. So chances are that's going to fall into the effects category, and once I select it, there is remove effect right there. Now. You're going to notice at the bottom of the command palette that we have three different radio buttons. We have something that says button to button reassignment, active palette, 
menu to button reassignment. So what do the three of them represent? Well, what I'm gonna do first here is I'm just gonna move these just out of the way slightly so that I can open up my bin. Let's just see if I got any footage in here, which I do, which is good. It doesn't even really matter what it's of, that's perfect. Okay, so what we're gonna talk about first is a button to button reassignment. So how exactly does that work? Well, it actually works very simple. Let's just say for argument's sake, I'm going to map the rectangle tool to F1 on my keyboard. No problem. All I need to do is simply take that command, drag and drop right onto F1, and there we go. There's the rectangle tool now mapped to F1 on my keyboard. Now, if you realize that you've put a command somewhere that you don't want it and you just want to get rid of it, what you can actually do is navigate over here to the other category, and there's actually a blank command that you can simply grab and drag and drop, and that will remove whatever command you happen to put down there that you didn't want. Now, of course, again, we can always hold the toggle key, the shift key on the keyboard, and then we could map, you know, find bin, we could map, you know, the gang button, we could map, you know, find frame, etc., etc. Okay, now something else that I do want to mention about button to button reassignments. Now, I'm talking about altering the buttons on your keyboard. But if you take a look at the composer window and you take a look at your timeline, there are a lot of other buttons that are on these tools as well. And of course, we can come in and if I wanted to add, let's just say, now I've already got collapse on here, but let's just say hypothetically I wanted to add, you know, collapse again. I can simply grab it, drag and drop it right over here, and there we go. I can replace any of these commands with a simple drag and drop of a new command. Okay, now what I'm going to do here, since I like my timeline set up a very specific way. I'm just going to drag that blank one over there. Now something else I should point out is that the composer window right now with the way that I edit only has one row of buttons. But maybe you know when you're starting out you're going to want to have two rows of buttons because you want to map a couple things on there. Um, one thing that I actually like to map into my composer window all the time, two commands actually, is I map the freeze frame and the motion effect. Now the motion effect, uh, effect we can actually find right over here in effects. It's right here, motion effect editor. I will normally put that right here because in most cases with the motion effect editor, you're doing that to something that you have up here in the preview window. So for example, if I wanted to slow this clip down, I would just select the range that I want to slow down. Now what I'm going to do here is just close out of the command palette so we can actually have this as the active button. And as soon as I select it, I can now get in and create a variable speed clip, a slow-mo or a, you know, two times, three times, you know, four times real-time clip. Okay, I'm just going to cancel out of that. Let's hit command and three. We'll remember that as the shortcut for the command palette. Now, next, the active palette. Now, you'll remember I said, you know, I want to get in and I want to adjust the motion effect uh, or the motion of this clip. So I quit out of the command palette to access this as an actual button or an actual command. Because if I try to do it right now, it thinks that I want to create a new button or a drag and drop a new button on top of the one that's currently here. Well, the next option will actually negate that. What it's going to do is I'm going to select active palette. I'm going to come right over here. And now anything that is in the command palette that I click on. So let's just say for argument's sake, I was to come over here and click on motion editor, it's actually gonna function as a true command. So conceivably, I could have all of the commands at my disposal if I wanted to leave the command palette open. Let's just say, you know, right here, if I was to bring my sequence window down a bit, I could put the command palette here and actually edit with the command palette here if there were certain functions that I always needed to go to, but I didn't want to constantly be going, you know, let's just say to a shortcut or, you know, shift on my keyboard. Okay, so let's move on to the next one, menu to button reassignment. Why would we want menu to button reassignment? Well, maybe I want to have commands from the menu accessible to me either A, on my keyboard, or B, on the composer or the timeline. Now, you're going to notice up here that I do actually have already a few commands like audio mix right here. Actually, what I'm going to do is set this back to button to button reassignment. You'll see that I have audio mix, audio mixer, pardon me, right here, which is right here, tools, audio mixer. You'll see that I also have other ones like the modify command map to F10. Now, to do this is actually very simple. All I'm going to do is come to menu to button reassignment. Now, it's a little bit different. We're not dragging and dropping in this case. But what we're going to do is we're going to select the button that we want to alter. So, for example, if I want to alter F2, and let's just say I want to put, now, I used to have batch digitize map to F2, but I really don't do a lot of digitizing anymore. I do a lot of importing, though. So let's say hypothetically that I wanted to map batch import to F2. Once I click on it, all I need to do now is simply navigate up to, I believe it's in clip, there we go, batch import. As soon as I do, batch import is now mapped to F2 on the keyboard. 
So if I was to come out here, let's just close the keyboard setting. If I was to select this clip here and hit F2 on my keyboard, of course, Media Composer is now going to perform the batch import command. Now, of course, let's just go back to our settings here. I'll just bring this down here. Let's come to our settings. Let's come to keyboard. Whoops. I always go back to that interplay user setting. I don't know why. Let's try this again here. Keyboard. There we go. Perfect. Okay. And let's get the command palette back. We know the shortcut is command and three. Now, something else that I want to point out, and this is something that people often overlook. Okay, so let's say I want to map a few commands to um, the keyboard here, and I can't seem to find them in the command palette, and I can't seem to find them in the composer window up there, but I do find them down here in this fast menu. Let's just say, for example, audio waveforms. And let's say I want to map audio waveforms uh, to the composer window over here. Let's just say I want to map it right here where there's, we currently have a command already, that's the extract command, but I always use the keyboard shortcut for that. So I want to put audio waveform, actually let's do extend here and audio waveform right here. So extend, very simple. I know that extend can be found inside of the trim command. We're going to do a button to button reassignment. I'm going to take extend and drag it and drop it right there. Now for the audio waveforms, that is a command that's found down here and it's inside of a menu. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the composer window I'm going to navigate down to the fast menu. I'm going to come up to my audio data and I'm going to say show me the audio waveform right there. And now you'll see that waveform is an option. So and what I'm going to do here, do I? Oh, perfect. I actually have an audio clip here. I'm just going to take the audio clip, drop it in. Right now I can see the audio waveforms. Let's just, just go back to the active palette here. But now I can actually toggle them on and off right here from the composer window. And of course, I could easily map this to a command on the keyboard to do the exact same thing. Okay, so I hope this tutorial has shown you about keyboard settings and more importantly, how you can utilize the command palette to get some commands onto your keyboard, your composer window, or your timeline that most people think might not be available, but you're definitely gonna want them you know, at your disposal right away because maybe it's a task that you do daily and you just realize how much time it takes up constantly going back to a menu to find it every time. Now, before I wrap up this lesson, I want to thank our sponsor video guys and don't forget to check them out and use coupon code MC101 for 5% off your Avid purchase or any other purchase including G Technology Storage, software plugins, and so much more. And if you like this tutorial, please click that subscribe button and don't forget that if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can post them in the comment section below this lesson or you can send them to Kevin P. McAuliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.